So mum is 80 next week and she was diagnosed with dementia about four years ago. Um, just forgetfulness, issues of you would tell her a story and um, she would forget or she would be repeating herself or she would be forgetting how to do simple things like using the remote control for the television or paying for shopping. Um, so at that point we had suggested to her that perhaps we need to go to the doctor. So we had an official diagnosis about four years ago. So about two years ago, my mum's always been a slightly built lady anyway, but about two years ago we noticed that she was starting to lose weight. Um, the forgetfulness was becoming more and more often. She was becoming difficult to hold a sensible conversation with. So if I had challenged the fact that she wasn't eating, then she would become upset or angry rather than having her usual rational approach to why are you asking me this question? Are you worried about me? Or um, very, very defensive. And then she became quite unwell one day and my sister and I went up to the house and couldn't gain access to the house. We'd had to call the police to break in, but that then resulted in a long term stay in hospital for mum, where they had gone through all their checks and discovered that she was quite severely underweight um, and had suggested to us that there might be an issue with her eating. And, and we weren't with her all the time, but whenever she was with us, she was eating fine when she was with us, but obviously we weren't with her every day and so hadn't fully appreciated that she wasn't eating the way that she should have been. Um, so she stayed in hospital for about three months whilst they tried to build up weight um, and suggested that before mum came home we then introduced a care package um, which involved the carers coming in three or four times a day just to trigger the, the eating habits just to make sure that she had that social contact when we were at work. So initially, um, we, when, when she'd been home with support, shortly after she'd been let out of hospital, we received a phone call from a neighbour to say that he was concerned about her because he had seen her um, exiting the house at half past ten at night, in the middle of winter, it was, it was, um, it was dark, and, and he'd, he'd called us to say that he'd spoken to her, she, she left the house. And he thought that she thought it was early morning as opposed to, to late at night. So we then began to understand that there was an issue with timing and she was finding it difficult to tell the time and didn't know if it was morning in the winter or if it was night in the winter. So I'd spoken to the support worker who had suggested the community alarm where the doors, the front door of the house is alarmed between 8 o'clock at night and 7 o'clock in the morning, which means that as soon as mum attempts to exit the property between those times, the alarm will then sound. Initially, it would come through to me on my mobile phone. If I don't pick it up, it would then go through to my sister on her mobile phone. And if she doesn't pick it up, it then goes through to the community alarm centre. And we then know that mum's on the move, or at least the front door has been opened. Um, and they explained that sometimes people will just open the front door briefly just to see what it's like outside and then they'll close it and go back. But even if she does that, the alarm will go off and we then have the opportunity to speak to her through that technology to make sure that, that she's OK. Apart from the community alarm, um, we knew that timing was an issue. So I had um, done a bit of research and found that there was a talking watch that I could get my mum. Um, that would tell her the date, it would tell her the time of day. If she looked at the watch, she could see the time herself. And sometimes she does that, but I'm not convinced she fully understands what time it is. So she knows then that she can push a button and the watch will speak to her and tell her it's Tuesday, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it's 10 o'clock at night. Um, we also combine that with a, a whiteboard that we keep in mum's house that acts as a big diary. So on the whiteboard I would have the seven days of the week. And if mum's moving around town or getting picked up or dropped off, I would have timings on that board. 
so she can then go to the board hopefully with the watch and tell the time and be able to understand that somebody's coming to pick it up that's often the the biggest the biggest fear is that she understands she's due to be picked up in half an hour but then the next minute she just forgets and so we then have to try and keep reinforcing the the timings for her uh, she's now at daycare four days a week which gives us some comfort that she's getting a full meal um, each day uh, and she's got that social contact but without the technology we then struggle to get her there um, because whilst we would always pitch in and help and pick up where we can with all the best will in the world we can't be there all the time which means that unless mum is is picked up and dropped off and that information is reinforced then we wouldn't be able to have the security and the comfort that she's been looked after as we think she should be. So in addition to all the, the door sensors and um, the talking watches and we also have a GPS tracker for mum that we fix to her keys because she's very security conscious and she very rarely goes out of the house without her keys. And so we attach a GPS tracker to her key. She doesn't know what it is, she just knows it's part of a key ring. But the idea is that if mum is out and about and I need to know where she is, because she's always got her keys with her, um, I can use my phone to text the GPS tracker and the GPS tracker will then text me back with a Google Map location and I can instantly, using my mobile phone, go into the Google app location and know where she is. If I think that she's perhaps on a bus, I can wait a couple of minutes and text the GPS again and then I can tell which direction she's going in and how quickly she's going so I can then determine if she's walking or if she's on a bus. So if I think she's in a place that she shouldn't be, um, certainly I can make sure somebody's there to, to pick her up and if, if she needs to be located then she can be. So the GPS tracker also has a, an alarm button on it. Um, there are various features that you can disable. We've chosen to disable the alarm button um, because I don't think she would understand how to work it. But I think somebody that has a bit more consciousness about that, that might be a useful feature if, for example, they'd fallen. Because you can also wear the GPS tracker around your, your neck, so it could be a mobile alarm. Uh, there's also a facility in it that I have disabled whereby um, you can use your phone to speak to the GPS tracker directly. Uh, I've disabled it because I think it would alarm my mother to have a voice coming from, you know, she doesn't know she has it and she doesn't know it's there. Um, but certainly if I needed to talk to her, I could enable that feature and that would allow me to perhaps guide her home if she was, if she was totally lost or get her to a place of safety if I felt she needed to be. Without that support, and it's not just a support for mum, it's also a support for us as well because we have the security and the, the comfort of knowing that she's okay. But certainly without that support, I don't think my mum would be able to live independently at home. I think we would have to ensure that she was monitored more closely. Um, with the technology in place, we can actually monitor remotely um, and it's not invasive because she doesn't know it exists. She doesn't know that she's being supported in that way. Um, so we can ensure her safety remotely um, whilst making sure that she's quite oblivious to that security blanket that's there. And she wants, you know, she's a feisty woman. She, she wants to live independently. She doesn't want to rely on other people. So the less invasive that technology can be, I think, the better.